why the UK government and opposition is not moved when they see, you know, when they hear from UN officials, when Israel has killed 62 UN aid workers over the last couple of weeks. I mean, why aren't we moved by that? And look, this is very serious and dangerous, and I am really, really hurt as a Palestinian to follow some of the UK state, statements and, and positions. I mean, about ceasefire, for instance. They tell you, we cannot call for ceasefire because it will bring more violence. Hang on. More violence? This well, garnish... I mean, to, to have a ceasefire, you, you have to have two sides willing to have one. The Israelis clearly have said that they're not willing to have one, and Hamas have said exactly the same. So, I mean, it, it's a domestic political row no, here, is which is meaningless. It is, in such conflict, that's why we established the post-World War II international order, because we don't leave things to the two conflicting parties, because there is something bigger that brings people together. And if, it's, if it's two countries enforcing that, enforcing that are fighting each other in some way, you can see a way forward. But here, that's not yeah. what we have. Uh, uh, we, we have Israel as a country and we have Hamas as an uh, internationally recognised terror group. Yeah, and can we unpack that UK statement, both government and opposition? Sure. They say a, a ceasefire now will uh, allow for more violence. What do they mean by that? More violence on the Israelis. That's the fear. What about violence on us, which is on steroids? Way more. You know what that tells you? It tells you some sort of racism, anti-Palestinian racism. No. No, yes. No, it doesn't. Ian, Ian, because let me ask you this question. Do you think these statements are really uh, uh, give the sense that Palestinian lives matter equally? Well, equally, I, uh, equally. Yes, if you I, really, I do, uh, actually, because uh, I, I think both political parties here... I mean, they're taking the same position, as you pointed out, that yeah. they say there should be humanitarian pauses. Now, frankly, oh. I don't see, it's, this is semantics. I, I don't see that there is much of a difference between um, pauses and a ceasefire, because if you have a pause, clearly both sides are, are go, hopefully going to abide by that. So, I mean, we're dancing on the, on the head of a pin here, talking about these definitions. But the reason that both political parties have taken the pro-Israeli position is because of what happened on the 7th of October. And however much people on one side of the argument m might like to say, well, that wouldn't have happened without 70 years of repression, OK, I can, I can see the argument there, that in no way can justify what happened on the 7th of October. And as an, al as a, an ally of the United Kingdom, I don't think it's a great surprise that the United Kingdom government would condemn that in the way that it has. I disagree. The rules are clear. Laws are clear. The, the moral guidance of law is what we need right now. And the international system always manages to enforce law when it comes to anything but Israel. Look at Ukraine. Look at Russia. Every single provision of law was enforced. And when it comes to, to us, the hypocrisy, the selectivity... Are you genu do you genuinely believe genuine. that the UK government's position is racist on the, this? Uh, I, I think some of the statements do not consider Palestinian lives to matter as much as Israeli but Rishi, life. Rishi Sunak think, has uh, gone out of his way to say to Israel that you have to obey I, international law, I, far more than Keir Starmer has, I would, actually. I, I would stand as Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister and the Head of Opposition, and call for ceasefire immediately. When I see these children, when I hear from UN agencies that this is a, a mass industrial scale murder, a humanitarian catastrophe like never before. Oxfam says this is unprecedented in its history and it has personnel on the ground in Gaza. I would immediately call for do ceasefire. You, and when I link the ceasefire to Israeli security, when I link the ceasefire, when Palestinians are being killed by the hundreds and the thousands, mostly women and children, then I feel that our lives value less. Then I really do feel... Let, let me ask you I a do feel, question. And, and another argument, Ian, by the UK government that in a situation of hostages, we cannot call for a ceasefire until hostages are released. This is not international law. International law actually is clear. Call for ceasefire so the two sides can negotiate hostage exchange and releases uh, in, a, in, a, in a situation. But Israel has already said it would do situation. that. And you see, if you justify murdering, mass murdering, all these innocent people in Gaza as we speak because of hostages, Hamas or any other Palestinian group 
will come out and say, okay, we have thousands of Palestinian hostages in Israeli jail, yeah. including children, and therefore our yeah. violence is justified. You see, but, you see but where the, I'm going with this well, conversation? Well, I, I do, we but need, I think you're ignoring balance. the fact we that Israel balance. has already said yes. that it would be, con well, about happy, but, but it would negotiate the release of Palestinian people in, in, in jail in Israel in exchange for the hostages. Yeah, but, but that, cannot be, can, that, that cannot be done when it's jet fighters are literally k killing hundreds every day. That needs to be Well, done. then this will go on forever, that, won't that, it? We had conflicts before. That's why I refer back to the rules. By the way, this is a moment that I think it's the biggest test, stress test of our international system. You have senior UN officials resigning today. Uh, this is really a, a serious test. We always manage to apply rules when it comes to, you know, the West friends like Ukraine and apply rules against the West enemies like Russia or foes. But when it comes to friends, rules vanish. All what we need to do is just to apply the rules. Did Israel breach international law? The question was asked to the prime minister and to the head of opposition, the leader of opposition. And nobody said yes. I mean, what? What? Well, because it, the, the, re, the <laughs> reason, surely, Anna, I, is I, if you I, believe, I, as I, the Prime Minister and Keir Starmer both clearly do, that Israel is, is not breaching international law, the reason for that is they say that the strikes on Gaza are in self-defence and they're targeted to root out Hamas fighters and to kill them. That, that is the justification. Mm -hmm. So therefore, and if they're right, I mean, it, I would hope that Israel is trying to target as much as possible. But if you believe that this is all about punishment and killing as many Palestinians as possible, you're never going to accept that argument. I, I completely understand no, 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 that. No, 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 don't, don't hear it from me. Don't listen to me. Listen to the Israeli... Well, I do listen to you because please, I think please, you're a sensible voice. Please, 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 take the Israeli voices and the Israeli official line very seriously. They are saying this is revenge, number one. And number two, it's Who has said that? everybody. <laughs> I'll, I'll share with you whatever you want of lines. You would not believe the racism, the supremacy. You will not believe the geno genocidal discourse and genocidal rhetoric being used by Israel all the way to the prime minister when he quotes, quotes the uh, uh, Amaleks and the Torah. That's... And not only it's revengeful and that, but you have Smotrich, who's the finance minister, who's the second most important man in the government, who has published a plan saying that Palestinians have three choices. Either they accept to live slaves under our rule, or they leave en masse outside, transfer, or they're killed. He published that. And now it's in steroids, this plan. They are planning it. They are pushing the Palestinians to a second Nakba out of our homeland. This is the first time in history that refugees are made refugees, twice and three times the same refugees. I mean, come on, Dale. This isn't just about Israel's right to defend, to defend itself. What is there in terms of right to defend itself when you are deliberately, deliberately dropping thousands, thousands of tons so how of does bombs this end? on the heads how, of families? How does this end? Because Israel is not going to suddenly one day sort of wake up from this nightmare and say, oh, yeah, we got this wrong. We'll, we'll have a ceasefire immediately. And was happy to sit around a table with Hamas and talk about peace. That, that's not going to happen. So how does it end? Equal application of rules. Number one, there are supremacist, racist, kahanist elements in the Israeli uh, 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 government now. We don't. Hamas is not part of our government. We need the UK, number one, to designate these groups on the terrorist list. We need that equal application of rules. So you think the British uh, government is going to designate the Israeli government on the terrorist list? It, well, if the definition of terrorism well, is... That's not going to happen. Why? Why, Dale? Well, why? It just These won't. people... You know, Bingvir is handing machine guns for the last so many weeks to settlers, illegal settlers, militias. They're forming militias. They are performing pogroms all over the West Bank and they're killing civilians, our civilians everywhere. Th this is not terrorism? Why not? And he's doing it right, you know, publicly in front of everybody. Why do we fail the to apply the same rules. And then we will raise our hands and accept these rules to be applied on them, on Hamas, on anybody. The problem with the UK and the West is the sheer double standards that has lasted for a long time. And you tell me about the UK. You know the historic responsibility, the moral responsibility of the UK, the Balfour Declaration, and the mandate of Britain that has denied us our right as a nation and our right as a state. As a nation, because in the Balfour Declaration, we were turned from the original native population that lived there for millennia into the non-Jewish population. So Britain has a role. And this is not to blame Britain. This is to say this is the time. This is the time that Britain sets itself aside, not as part of the conflict, but, but I come, as part I of come the back to, I come back to the Today, question. How does it end? Yes. 
Today, Kirstama gave such a contradictory remarks. The second part was absolutely commendable. He said, we must focus on the Palestinian inalienable rights. We must end the occupation. Settlements are illegal. The refugees must never be made refugees again. And he stressed the recognition of the state of Palestine and that a political solution is needed immediately. He pressed all the right buttons, but it contradicted his earlier message that Israel has the right to do what it's doing right now. It contradicted his commitment and the UK commitment to an international system that the UK held. Well, I mean, he, he, he's not the prime minister. And you know very well, given what happened under the Corbyn leadership, that he's had three years to try and rid the Labour Party of its reputation for being anti-Semitic. And he's done quite a good job on that. So this is a very tricky position for him. But I, I have to come back to the question as to how does this end? How do you see it ending? By, by really turning this most tragic moment in our history, this moment that will leave a dent in our conscience for generations to come, maybe for eternity, turning it into a positive moment. And we can. I think we can. Instead of talking about uh, not ending Israel's violence, uh, 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 we, should, we should seriously consider now a, a bold move to bring everybody together to end Israel's occupation. This is about time. Israel cannot control an entire nation against our will. No one can underestimate no, the desire I, of a nation I agree, for freedom I agree with that. and liberation. I, and you know what? The last sentence. No one can underestimate the power of hopelessness on the other side, on the other side of the coin. We need to give people hope.